Hi, my name is Yarek Portillo. Uh, I am a doctoral student at UC Berkeley, previously at UC Davis in the School of Education. My work as a student, as a researcher, is focused specifically on literacy studies uh, and the way that literacies exist across borders and in various community settings outside of schools. Um, and this focus on trans-border literacies is very deeply connected to my own work as a practitioner in the Fandango. Um, the Fandango is this space of participatory music making that comes out of Veracruz, Mexico and the style of Son Jarocho. Uh, and it's this community-based music making experience that, that is rooted in, in convivencia, which is this idea of coming together, of living together, of existing and creating together. And so I've been a practitioner of the Fandango for, for many years now. And recently when I moved to California, I became involved with the Son Jarocho and Fandango community here in California, whereas previously I was involved in, in the community in Philadelphia. And so as a graduate student and as a researcher, my work has always been based on doing community-centered educational work and research. That is not contributing to often extractivist notions of what research has historically been and still continues to be in many cases. Uh, and this is how I became involved with the Mellon Public Scholars Program. Um, I saw this commitment to public scholarship and to scholarship that honored community work and community relationships. And so my project through the Mellon Scholars Program was specifically this work with the Fandango community in Sacramento um, and developing and continuing to, to grow the talleres, the workshops, uh, of the Fandango community here in Sacramento. And so the instruments you see behind me here uh, are many of the instruments that we teach and learn in these workshops. Uh, we see, I don't know if I can point, we see jaranas, leona, requintos, marimbol, quijada. Then on this side, we have the tarima that we dance on. And so in the Fandango, you find people gathered around the tarima, around this raised wooden platform the people on the tarima are dancing a zapateado, a tap dance, and then the people around the tarima are playing many of the instruments you see here and creating music together. It's a very improvisational way of music playing, a very participatory way of, of playing music and of creating. And so with these talleres in, in Sacramento, we um, we decided to partner both my work as a graduate student in education and the talleres that have been going on here uh, to look at the different um, ways that we can, we can continue to teach Son Jarocho as a community based in the United States, based in California, practicing a music that originates from El Sotavento de Veracruz. Um, and so this Mellon Public Scholars Project was primarily oriented toward just continuing to build this relationship. Uh, I, as a practitioner of the Fandango, showed up to Sacramento finding a community within this, these talleres, within these, this group of people who practice the Fandango in Sacramento. As a graduate student, as a researcher, uh, my work is focused on education and so I wanted to look at the educational practices and the literacy and the meaning making that is taking place both in the Fandango and in these talleres. Uh, as someone who comes out of community work, I've always believed that any research that happens, any research that takes place needs to happen with the consent and with a genuine relationship with the community where it's happening. So this Mellon, this Mellon project over the summer was dedicated specifically to that, to really building a genuine relationship to see if this is a research partnership that we want to continue and that we want to develop. So this summer was dedicated to just building community through these talleres, both with myself and with my partner and with all the folks who've been doing this in Sacramento already for a long time, who welcomed us in into a new community here when we moved to California. Um, and so the proposal at the beginning of the project in early spring going into the summer had been build out talleres, work with young people, work with community. Um, and then the pandemic hit and COVID hit and we were forced to really 
reimagine what a participatory music and a community-based music look like in a time of social distancing and in a time where so much transferred into a virtual sphere. Um, and so our summer was nothing at all like what we had planned, like what we had imagined together. And instead it became dedicated to, to developing virtual tagueres. Uh, and for me as a student of education, as an educator, um, this was a new challenge, but an exciting one nonetheless. Uh, we began transitioning our workshops, which used to take place in a park on Sundays, uh, to something that was now taking place virtually on a computer. And of course, we hit many hiccups along the way, some of them around access, some of them around learning to navigate technology, and a lot of them around how do you play music together using a computer, using Zoom, using virtual platforms. Um, and so that became our big project, uh, figuring out how to teach that is virtually. Um, and then we also began to imagine what could come from uh, having access now and always having had access, but never used maybe uh, these virtual spaces of learning. And so we also began collaborations with teachers from Mexico, from Veracruz, who worked with us in these talleres through the summer. And for us, there were kind of two levels of, of specialness to this, right? One of them being that we were able to continue building a relationship with the teacher who had come to visit us once before in Sacramento, gave us a one day workshop, and then she had to leave again, right? Uh, and in having her zoom in virtually, she was able to continue this relationship, continue her teaching in a way that would not have been possible if we were only doing in-person talleres. Uh, but the other piece that was very important to us as we think about, and especially as I think about literacy practices and what it means to develop social and political literacies, um, was that in inviting this maestra to join us from Mexico, we're also able to provide a sense of economic security for people who have consistently lost their jobs and lost access to work and to income in light of the pandemic. Right now, many elders from our community uh, made their income off of going to presentations, off of traveling and teaching, off of having access to work that did not require virtual, virtual income and virtual labor. And so in being able to invite our maestra in to join us virtually, we're able to secure funding to pay her for the work she is unable to continue doing in light of the pandemic. Um, and so really this becomes a moment of not just thinking about how do we develop musical literacies, how do we develop community literacies, but also how do we develop social, political and economic literacies through our practices, through our work as a community. Um, and how do we develop new ways of teaching in these moments? Uh, and so I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that came from this summer of being able to reimagine learning in community and participatory settings and being able to reimagine what it looked like to support one another and our communities through music, through work, and also what it means to build a committed researching relationship because that's what a lot of this summer was about was building that relationship both with the community that in some ways I've always been a part of, but I'm now also entering as a graduate student and as a researcher, and to make sure that we're equally committed to the vision of what these talleres are, what these workshops can be, and what, what the Fandango can mean for our community. Um, and this pandemic really challenged the ways we understand the notions of community, right? Does community have to be something that happens face to face? Does community have to be something that happens in a geographic location? And really doing these talleres together over the summer and building these partnerships across borders reminds us that the Fandango is a trans-border national practice. I mean, a trans-border transnational practice, but also that we have tools that equip us and enable us to keep breaking down these borders through collective music making and through collective and collaborative education. Uh, and so as an educator, I think I, I have really, I can't say stepped away from this project because I'm still in it and I will continue to be in it, but I've, 
I've transitioned out of this summer and have really seen the opportunities through this Mellon Public Scholars Project to, to reimagine what education looks like, what the Fandango looks like in, in these moments of difficulty. And, um, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity and for the opportunity to be able to focus on my community and on continuing building relationships with my community and of working alongside people who are committed to imagining research that operates in this way, to imagining research that isn't just dedicated to the ivory tower, but that is dedicated to, to real relationship building and to real commitments to community. Um, and so to close out, I want to share a video of a young person who's been participating in our talleres through the, through the summer as since we transitioned to virtual talleres because he'd been unable to participate with us prior to that. Uh, and the ways that he's now imagining music making in a collaborative way when he only has himself and the people in his home. Um, and this is, to full disclosure, this is my younger brother who's been participating in these talleres from other places in California um, now that we've transitioned to virtual spaces. And for me, this is also illustrative of the ways that young people help us reimagine the work that we're already doing. Uh, as a young person with a lot of technological experience and with a lot of video making experience and music making experience, he was able to take the things that we did in these talleres, the things that we learned from La Maestra, the things that we worked on together to create music in a way that is meaningful and accessible to him. Uh, and you'll see this in the video that uh, sim is similar to a lot of the, I think the app is acapella videos, where folks kind of layer videos of themselves playing music. So I'm gonna close with this video of my dear brother and an active member of our music making community and of our Fandango community, playing a short excerpt of Los Juiles, which is one of the sones that we worked on throughout the summer. And so you'll see him playing many of the instruments that I have here behind me and, uh, and singing some of the verses that we learned together. Cuando me voy a bañar, estando la luna llena, estando la luna llena, cuando me voy a bañar, antes de tirarme al mar, le pido a Dios por mis penas que me libre de escuchar. El canto de la sirena, el viejo anciano con su violín de la barba blanca me dijo así, esos cuiles no son para mí, son para mi china que lo tapé. 